As the excavation pits get deeper, accommodations need to be made to allow safe entry and exit from the squares. So we often use sandbags and ladders. See that square in the background that looks like a teacup? Yeah, that's mine. Guess I better get to some bulk trimming. Each day, hundreds of buckets of dirt are removed from the site. In archaeological terminology, the dirt and the well, sand and really anything soft, that's yeah. removed from around our items, that's known as the matrix. So the matrix is simply what suspends the object in the archaeological record. So if you think of like that jello that your grandma makes and it's got the grapes in it, well the grapes are in this case our echo facts and the jello suspending them, that is our matrix. And when we are moving an exceptional amount of dirt, we help each other by forming a bucket chain. Everybody pitches in and obviously it's a great upper body workout. When we are in areas with high concentrations of artifacts and echofacts, we often pour the dirt through a screen to sift for small objects that may have escaped the naked eye. This is known as screening. Now, unfortunately, Christine here hasn't found anything yet, but a tooth, a bead, or any other small artifact could easily get lost if it were not for the screening process. Now find something good. Yeah, I'm missing sparrows. Sites in the Middle East yield thousands of pottery sherds each season. As we excavate, we fill buckets with all of the sherds that we find. Each bucket is tagged with the critical information such as the area, the square number, the stratum number, so that we'll eventually know where all of this stuff came from. Then, each afternoon, we are required to wash the pottery that we excavated from the previous day. So the sherds have soaked overnight, and the next day we then carefully wash away probably centuries of dirt to reveal pieces that have not seen the light of day for, in some cases, thousands of years. After the washed pieces have dried, they are laid out to be red. So reading is just basically looking at them and analyzing them for uh, form and function and fabric. Markings, uh, shapes, those kind of things can help us determine the time frame, such as say, ah, oh, this is from the Iron Age. And this is a very important component of putting our site into its chronological setting. Um. Sometimes we're really lucky that we find really big, beautiful pieces of a jar like this that go together. Restorable pieces or any uh, sherds with significant markings on them will be recorded and cataloged for further examination. Telroho represents thousands of years of human history in this part of the world. Each square that is dug and each bulk stratigraphy holds the promise of a rich collection of artifacts and echofacts. But a site can only be excavated once in history, because once it is exposed, the information it holds will be lost unless carefully recorded and maintained for future generations of scientists and researchers. The science of archaeology has made quantum leaps over the past 100 years. There's no doubt that future archaeologists, perhaps even some in this class, will have access to more advanced technology with a greater understanding of techniques and science. That's why we always leave some sections unexcavated and undisturbed, to allow future generations the ability to use their more advanced technology to increase mankind's understanding of our past.